Welcome to this beginner tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about sockets. So let's get started. First off, we're going to be using some assets. So if you go to the marketplace and you go to the free tab and marketplace collection, currently on the very last page you have something called the Infinity Blade Weapons. Make sure to get that particular uh, pack and then add it to your project and I'll see you inside. Now we're inside of Unreal Engine and we have imported the packs as you can see here Infinity Blade Weapons folder has been added. Currently I have a third person character don't be fooled by the text that says first person character because I have replaced the first person character with a third person character over here and I've created a map for us to play around in. So if you want to follow along, you want to use version 4.26 and you want to use something like a third person template if you want to have it as closely related to this as possible. Now with, out of that, with that out of the way, let's get into what sockets are. The best way is probably if we start by going into our third person character and then you can find the mesh. On the details side here you can find a skeletal mesh connected to this mesh. If you press the magnifying glass we can get to the skeletal mesh where it is. Then you can double click on that to get it opened. Now you have a bunch of different sections up here in the top right and the one that we're the most interested in today is the one called skeleton because this is where we have our different skeletal bones that the Unreal Engine uh, mannequin consists of. And this is also where we create sockets. Because sockets is something you connect to a skeleton. So uh, if you have multiple meshes that all use the same skeleton and you create a socket for one of these, then that means that it will be connected to the skeleton and all the meshes can make use of it if they wanted to. Now, the creation of a socket is to create a sort of anchor to place an item usually. So most commonly used it would be something like the right hand. For example, you create a socket to have some sort of a weapon in that hand. But it can be all kinds of other things. It can be uh, sockets to have specific types of gear like the feet or the belt or a helmet. Or it, you could be uh, creating a socket on the back of the character to have somewhere like sheathing a weapon, having a bow, maybe a backpack, something of that nature. So sockets are flexible and you can use them for a whole lot of things. But we're going to be demonstrating the most common uh, usage today which is to create one for your right hand so you can have a weapon there. So what you need to do is first you need to locate your right hand in this case. So hand L here means the left hand. So we can close this down and we can look over here. We can see hand R. Now hand R has a lot of different fingers here. But what you most likely want to do is find the, 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 the bone that's most closely connected to where you want the uh, socket to be because when you create a socket, you create it under a bone as a parent. Let's demonstrate this. So if we right click here, you can see that we get an option to add socket. And we can name this socket, uh, let's call it right hand weapon socket. So that's a super descriptive name. And if you close down all of these other fingers here, you can see that it is in line with them. It's on the same level as the hand R is. And what that means is if you put a weapon in this socket, the, the item will be following the motion of animations from the bone that it's connected to. So if we put it in the hand, for example, it's going to follow along with the motions of the hand and if we put it on uh, like uh, our pelvis we might want to have it on the pelvis if we wanted to have a belt and some sort of socket on the head if we wanted to have it to the head so it's it follows the appropriate uh, part of the body now with a socket 
created, what you can do is you can manipulate it. Uh, you can translate it, you can move it, uh, rotate it, you can even scale it if you wanted to, though I don't see the whole lot of point of that. But translation might be something that's a little bit useful. So if we wanted to have this socket be displayed in the hand, we might want to have it. But that's not what I wanted to do. Let's go back and find our socket. And let's try to remove the socket instead of the hand. So something like that. Now th this is a matter of adjusting and tuning to get some kind of look that you really like, but uh, it's usually a matter of getting the proper feel, right? Now we have a socket that's possibly where, where it would be good to have a weapon, but how can we find out if it's gonna look good? Well that's where a preview mesh comes in handy. So if you were to right click a socket for example you could get an option down here that says add preview asset and you could add something. Now we downloaded a bunch of infinity blade weapons here. Let's see if we can find a weapon here that might be useful. A sword, how about a blade fencer. So that particular sword looks like this. Now most of these weapons are going to have their pivot point at the handle, meaning that uh, if you attach it to a socket, that's where it's going to be uh, placing the handle, which is good. Although uh, there are some things like orientation that's important. If you have multiple weapons that uh, have this kind of orientation where they're standing up, uh, it might be good to make sure that all of them have the same orientation uh, so that you can just easily swap them out in your socket in the game that you're making to make sure that they're all uh, aligning the same way because if you have one that's standing up like this and another one that's lying in this direction that means that they're 90 degrees off and that will appear in the socket as well. So if we were to take this SK blade fencer and we go back to our uh, skeleton the preview asset we type in fencer now you see what it looks like so a few issues first we can see that well if you were to hold this weapon you wouldn't actually be holding it like this you need to have the weapon twisted around so let's see if we can do that if we manage to click on this socket And then, okay, it doesn't want to. There we go, rotate. Rotate it around, something like that. That looks better, although maybe not super great. Um, let's see, yeah, from a distance. It might work. Okay, so. Now we have, for example, what I was talking about, where the orientation is important. This orientation suits us fine like this, but if we were to have a weapon that's imported in a different angle, then it would be looking like this when it's imported in, into the model. And that's not very good. So you can, of course, find solutions for that programmatically to like align them and stuff like that. Uh, but as a general uh, rule of thumb, it's good to have them created and done in the same way to alleviate to having to do those tiny fixes. But uh, yeah, so this is the first part. We have gotten a weapon uh, socket in place that sort of looks like it might be okay. So let's see what this would actually look like. And we can do that by going back to our blueprint character. So for me the third person character and hopefully for you as well. And we were to add a skeletal mesh which this blade happened to be. And it actually suggests even the, the fencing weapon here for me currently. And now it has placed it under the mesh, uh, subservient to the mesh here. What we want to do is we want to parent it to a socket. You find it over here by clicking the, the actual blade or the skeletal mesh. 
and then go into parent socket over here and click on the magnifying glass and then you can search for uh, right hand weapon socket or whatever you named it and you will see that it will pop into the position that we created before now this seems like it looks fairly nice we have rotated it around so it looks like it's the way that you would actually hold this kind of weapon and we can test this out in the map as well by uh, just playing because now we have created a weapon on the character and it is following the animation for where the hand is so wherever the hand is going to move the weapon is going to follow along now this may or may not look good or bad depending on the animations and depending on which bone you choose so you have to be a little bit uh, trial and error and see which kind of bone works the best i can uh, estimate for example that maybe there would be an issue that if we pick a bone let's see here hand r is the bone over here you see so it's the, the actual bend of the hand and that is probably quite good because then it means that if this character were to bend the hand the, the the socket we have created is in alignment with that socket or that that bend in the hand which means that it would follow along uh, but to keep in mind that sometimes you want to have a different bone depending on what your needs are uh, for example if you were to have a visible ring for a character you might have you can't have it on the hand because depending on how the bones uh, in the fingers move you, you need to adjust for that as well uh, so you should probably find a bone that's like uh, where the ring position would be most likely uh, in the skeleton structure anyway uh, that's all I think we need to go through now uh, because we were just going to discuss how to create the bone and uh, how sorry a socket and see how, how that ha hangs together and we're not gonna be creating any animations to check uh, how it would look like swinging around the sword or anything like that uh, that'll be happening in later tutorials so i hope this was understandable and you w were able to follow along and uh, that it all makes sense to you hopefully you found this video helpful if you liked the video leave a like if you did not like it leave a dislike leave any suggestions or comments you might have in the, the comment section down below uh, in the next video we will be looking at how we can combine a lot of the things that we, we have been going through lately and create that into a small game, making sure that we get a more holistic view of how we can use our knowledge. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.